Hey everyone, welcome to another top 10 list. This week I was going through my auction box trying to determine what was going to be in uh, the next auction. And I realized I've been buying a lot of stuff for, my, for the auction. <laughs> so as this stuff is stacking up, I noticed some of the things are a little better than others. So I decided to pull out the top 10 coolest items in my auction box. Now, what I would really like you guys to do is, after you see this top 10, put down in the comments, uh, list list two notes that I show from this top 10 that you would want to see in next month's auction. And whichever two notes get the most votes, they will definitely be in the next uh, auction. So you guys get to pick from the the good stuff that I've got in my auction box what you're going to see next. Eventually, all this stuff will be there, but this is a way for you guys to get a chance at uh, at picking the stuff that you want. If there's something you're looking for, this is it. You can, this is your way to tell me what you're looking for. All right, number 10 this week. Starting off with a fractional. Uh, this is a Stanton 50 cent fractional. Uh, Stanton fractional, I want to say this is from the, uh, is the Third edition, third edition or fourth edition, this is the one that was right after Lincoln being on there. Lincoln was on a 50 cent fractional, and then it was quickly replaced by the Stanton 50 cent fractional. This particular one, uh, you can see it looks like it's had a little bit of damage there on the back. I know that the uh, Stanton, even in VG8, which is probably pretty close to what this is, uh, books out at like $75 just as a starting point. So, you know me, I'm not going to go through what I'm going to be selling them for in this video. But it's what happens to be in there, so that's what I'm showing. Uh, so this, like I said, 50 cent fractional from the Civil War. 18, this is what, 1865-ish? So that is number 10, the Stanton fractional. Number 9. I have a large size 1917 legal tender. This one here features... The signatures of Teehee and Burke. Um, I know that these are a series that a lot of people try to put together by the signature combinations. This one, you know, it, it's not perfect, but it's in decent shape. Well, probably in that, uh, you know, 15 range. And you can see there is, uh, what is that, the spotting, uh, the, uh, spotting of land from... Christopher Columbus, and they're pointing to the land in the background. I, I think that's the name of the, the image over there. <clears throat> you can see the serial number. Uh, it's not a trinary, it's a quadrary. <laughs> Zeros, ones, fours, and fives. <laughs> Doesn't mean anything. From the AA block, but that, so that's kind of cool. Looking at the back, you can see here, series of 1917. And, of course, you've got... The sawhorse portion on the back. That's why this one's called the sawhorse. A whole book report done on counterfeiting and stuff like that. $5,000 fine, 15 years imprisonment at hard labor or both for counterfeiting. It's always neat when you can find a note that's got the counterfeiting punishment listed right on it. Anyway, this one's going to be number nine, the 1917 sawhorse, $1 legal tender. Number eight. I have a graded 1934C $10 star note. Now it's graded 25, very fine. And it, I'm always impressed with seeing graded notes in the lesser conditions because it helps your eye adjust to what equates to those conditions. <clears throat> Looking at this note, you can see it's got it's got the center crease. It's even got a slight stain here. What's it say on the back? Anything? Nope, doesn't say anything on the back. Just reading all the stuff. Uh, it is the $10 wide face star note. When it comes to the wides and narrows, I have yet to figure out exactly. I really need someone to go look. See here and here. That's the difference between wide and narrow. I, I, I really don't remember. I just know that every time you see a $10 note, especially the older ones, some of them are wide, some of them are narrow. This one is the wide. It's always neat to see the old star notes because they're all filled in like that. But yeah, once again, this one is a grade 25, and looking at it like that, you can see 
how it would compare to notes you'd find in your pocket today. The backs of the notes always tend to show all the details, so you always want to check the back of the note. You can see that hard crease there. Just trying to see what that is. And like I said, there's the FR uh, 2008G Star. And I'm not going through prices right now. I'm simply showing the stuff that's in the box. So, yeah, a graded star from 1934C. If I remember, 1934C might be a little bit rare. Uh, you can double check the book and find out. But anyway, that one is number eight. <clears throat> number seven, I have another 1917. This one, though, is a $2 bill. $2 bill from 1917, a cool image in the center. <laughs> you have the capital, but if you look, you've got horse-drawn carriages, and there's even like a horse-drawn bus right here. Uh, this particular one has the famous corner that's tore off. $2 bills were always considered unlucky back in the day, and people would get a $2 bill, they'd think it was bad luck, they'd tear the corner off. Then they'd spend the note, and the next person would tear a corner off. And it was said that once all four corners were torn off, the bad luck was gone. Thing is, is that you'd never know <laughs> when that would happen. So, I mean, that's just kind of goofy in and of itself. But that's why you see so many $2 bills that have a tear. Now, you don't see as many that have multiple tears because by the time those made it back to the bank, they'd get sent back to the Fed and destroyed. Uh, this one here, there's the serial number on it. Maybe you can read this one. This one is a little bit better. B9544747. There's the seal on it. <clears throat> now, once again, this one has, well, this is known as the bracelet back, if I recall correctly. And in this condition, it's dirty, it's wrinkled, you know, probably in the 8 range, 8 to 10 maybe. But still... It is a 1917 $2 bill, and uh, we're going to call this one number seven. So we'll put that there. Number six, I have another large size note. This one is a $10 Federal Reserve note. $10 Federal Reserve, this would be from 1914, if I recall. There it is, series of 1914. Uh, this one, the corner was dog-eared, and it was dog-eared so much that it finally ripped off of there. So it does have that touch of a corner missing. You can see that series of 1914 right there is pretty cool. This one is from New York and it's 777. So it's worth a million dollars. No, I'm kidding. Um, but no, this one does feature Andrew Jackson. Andrew Jackson on a $10 bill. That's kind of interesting to see, something you don't see every day. Uh, this particular bill. I, I find these interesting because they are Federal Reserve notes, but they have a blue seal. Blue seals generally represent silver certificates. And when this note was first printed, the first batch had red seals. So you don't have any large size green seal notes. Uh, the $10 bill, looking at the back, you've got agriculture on one side and industry on the other side. So that's pretty cool. $10.1914. This one is, what was this one? Number five, right? 10, 9, 8, 7. Nope, this one is number six. So if you want to see this one, that's number six. Number five. I have a Giori test note. This one is graded choice, uh, very choice new. Full offset on back is what it says there. Now, the Giori test note, this was the, the Giori printing company, and they developed a printing machine that could do multiple colors at one time. Now, what makes it interesting is when they were running these tests, they were using actual portions of real notes, which technically is illegal. You can't use... <laughs> Uh, the plates from real notes uh, to print because that's considered counterfeiting. So for the longest time, it was illegal to use, or it was illegal to own these because they used actual plates. Now, this one's cool because on the back of it, you have a full offset, and my camera is struggling to focus on that. Uh, you have a full offset, which means that uh, when they started the press, they started it and inked it before the paper went in. The back was printed on the pl back plate 
and then the paper was put in. So the paper absorbed the printing from the back plate while it was getting this done on the front plate. So <laughs> that is something you most certainly don't see. Uh, it's not listed as an error, but it does say full offset on back. So that's a Giori test note. Um, these test notes can be a few hundred dollars, it shows, especially graded. So whatever you want to call one with an offset print on the back, uh, I don't know. But anyway, that's my Giori test note, and that would be number five. Number four, I have a $20 note from World War II. This is a 1934A series $20 bill, and it has the Hawaii overprint on it. It has the brown seal, and if we look at the back, it has the Hawaii overprint. Now, the condition of this one is probably in the 10 range, and unfortunately, someone had a paperclip on it right here, and the paperclip rusted its way through the paper. You can see that on both sides. So it does have a little bit of damage. But it's still a $20 Hawaii note. Now, this is the largest denomination that was put out. You can see here it does say Federal Reserve note. A lot of the Hawaii and North Africa notes, all the North African notes were silver certificates. So to see a Federal Reserve note... That was kind of an odd way to go, but that's what they did with the 20s. Anyway, this particular 20, you can see the corner does have, it is missing the corner there. And looking at the back, once again, every time I show the back, you can always see the, you can always see the folds so much better on the back. Don't know why, but that's just the way it works. That one is going to be number four, $20 Hawaii emergency currency. Number three. This is a 1928, as I'm zooming in, 1928 $50 bill. Now, you know it was a 1928 without me zooming in, because if you look here, you can see it's got the numeral rather than having the letter. Now, 10 is from Kansas City, Missouri, and Kansas City, Missouri had the district J. J is the 10th letter, so that's where you get the 10s in the corners here and why the serial number starts with J. Fairly low number, too, starting with three zeros, so that's number 28,272. It is the first series of small head notes. All the notes prior to these were this big. So, yeah, I always tell you guys about $50 bills. They don't print very many $50 bills because they're just not used. If you have a $100 bill and you break it, you're probably going to break it for 520s. Because if you have a fit, if you break it for 250s, now you still have to go through the hassle of breaking the 50. So $50 bills aren't used very much, therefore they aren't printed very much. If you wanted to pick a denomination of small heads to collect, the 50 would be the way to go. Uh, there's just a natural scarcity for them. Taking a look at the back, this one is circulated. I'm not trying to say it's not. You can see the folds and creases, and it is dirty, but it is a $50 bill from that 1928 series, which they say right here is redeemable in gold or in lawful money, because all our notes back then were redeemable in gold. So it's just, too, it's just cool to see that obligation on there. Anyway, 1928, 10, uh, 1928 $50 bill from District 10, Kansas City, that is number three. Number two. This one's in rough shape, but uh, it's still one of the top 100. <laughs> this is an 1886 $1 Martha Washington silver certificate. Now, if I recall, 1886, let me make sure. That's Martha Washington on there, and you can see it's not in the greatest of shape. There it is, series of 1886. And let's see, anything cool about the serial number? No, I don't see anything cool about the serial number. You can see it's got the large red seal on here. But the cool part about this particular note is it's not it's the 1886 version, not the 1890 version, which means you have the full greenback on the back. Uh, the 1890 version, they changed the back to incorporate a lot more blank space so that you can see the paper fibers. So this is the original. <laughs> and that is pretty impressive. 
1886 $1 silver certificate. If, this could be the very first year that they had $1 silver certificates. Uh, I'm trying to think. Did they have silver? They had legal tenders prior to this. But yeah, this could this could probably be the first $1. They did make higher denominations, but I don't think they broke it down to a $1 until 1886. You got to remember, they had plenty of silver dollars being circulated, so there was no need for a $1 paper note since we had $1 in change. So yeah, this could easily be that first $1 certificate. And you can see on the bottom, it's not in the greatest, yeah, but it doesn't change the fact that it's still one of the top 100 notes. First note that's got a woman on it like that, the only named woman that I can think of on U.S. currency, that is number two. And finally, number one this week, I've got this one. I'll give you a second, see if you can see what it is. This is an actual ink contamination error. You can see how the green serial number is on this side, but on this side, the serial number is printed in black. What happened is when they do the third print, which has the seals and the serial numbers, when they were filling the black ink for the seal over here, some of that ink spilled into the ink for the serial number. And therefore you get a portion of the ink that would be black on this side and green on this side. Uh, the FC block, that's Atlanta, from 2017A. These are, these are the ones that you see every once in a while. I don't know of any others. There, there may have been one other one at one particular time. But uh, yeah, seeing that FC block, that's the giveaway that you're in the right ballpark for finding one of these. All of the ones that I have seen, all of the ones that I have owned, have started off in a very similar way. I want to say that 019 or even 016 somewhere in, in that range there for the ink contamination error. Uh, but yeah, genuine ink contamination error. This one's in actually, uh, it's in pretty good shape. It's not, you know, it's probably, a th you know, it might be a 30. I mean, if you look, you can see it does have crease this way. Well, it, maybe it's a 25. It looks good. It has excellent eye appeal at, at the very least. Anyway, the ink contamination error from 2017, that one is going to be number one. So, now that you've seen these 10, these are all in my auction box. They all will get auctioned off at some point. But, if you are interested in any of these in particular, uh, pick two or three that you want to see, and whatever whatever top two, the top two for sure will be in next month's auction. Uh, and I'll take it from there. So, I'll constantly be checking the... Uh, the comments to see which ones you guys are most eager to see. All right, I'll talk to you guys next week, and uh, have a great week, guys.